What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with rotary craft. Now today guys we're going to be messing around with the boring machine and contrary to what the name might suggest it's actually pretty exciting. Uh, it, maybe it's not exciting but it's really useful and it does prevent us from having to do a lot of boring work. It's pretty much going to allow us to have semi-automated mining. There will be a little bit of manual work involved every once in a while to either add some fuel to it or move it around if we want to start a new tunnel. But the main idea is that you're going to set it up. It's going to tunnel in one direction with a set of dimensions that you put into it and it's going to just drop all the ores and you know stone and all that stuff that it mines pretty much anything that it mines into your chest and you have the ability to enchant it which we're going to look into doing a little bit today and all that good stuff it's going to require depending on what you want to set the dimensions as different engines i'm going to be doing a two by one so it's going to be very simple we're just going to be using a gasoline engine and an eight to one diamond gearbox and that's really just going to be it you can power it more so less it really depends on where you want to mine what you want to mine and you know all that good stuff the dimensions you want to mine which we'll cover in a little bit but First thing we need to do is some crafting. So if we want to make the boring machine, it is going to be pretty much self-explanatory in terms of the drill, steel, all that stuff. But then we have the circuit board over here. Now, I didn't feel like going and actually making the silicon, even though we do have some leftover silicon powder. I'm just going to be using the ender pearl method. I went out, hunted two endermen, got an ender pearl. So we're good to go on this front and grab all this stuff out of here and craft that. I don't believe it needs. Yeah, it doesn't need to be. Ooh, advanced control. Yeah, this one doesn't need to be in the work table, though. The next thing that we're going to be doing is going to be... I guess we can finish up the diamond gearbox right here. We pretty much have everything we need. So we can combine these over here. Get the eight gear unit and combine them over here. So gearboxes are gonna be really crucial when you work with this because uh, the torque that you're having and the power that you're having and all that stuff is really important when it comes to the blocks that you're mining. If we look in the book here and we go to, I believe it's production and then boring machine, there's a lot of information right here, but if you flip to the next page, it says required power and torque varies. Input's on the back, but that's really not important. It's essentially depends on the hardness points of the block. So uh, the harder the material, the more power and torque to dig. So 640 watts per hardness point of the block in front of it and up to 512 nan uh, Newton meters of torque. I almost said nanometers again um, to cut through the harder materials. So pretty much uh, I believe obsidian is the hardest that we're going to be dealing with for the time being. Um, so that one is going to require the 512 and I'm pretty much setting this up to make sure that when we do hit obsidian, if we were to hit two blocks of obsidian, we would not have to worry about it stopping. Uh, so we're going to grab these out of here and we can start crafting this. I actually believe we have everything we need to craft this. Uh, so let's go back to the boring machine. Uh, go right here. Also, a lot of you guys commented, and I'm sure I'll get comments again, that's like NM stands for Newton meter. Uh, if you're curious why I screw that up, it's because uh, I am taking physics next year in college. I took it in high school already, but I've been taking chemistry for the last two semesters. And if it's a lowercase n and then m, it'd be a nanometer. But if it's an uppercase n, it'd be a newton meter. And I get those mixed up a little bit. So do not worry. I, I do know I just sometimes mess it up when I'm saying it um, momentarily. Okay, so I don't even know why I opened up the book, but the next thing that we're going to be making is going to be the gasoline engine, which is pretty much similar to the performance engine, although we're not going to be using additives. So it's relatively the same crafting setup, except we have these cylinders, which are just going to be eight regular steel ingots. So that is what these are going to be used for, the regular steel ingots for those. And then we're going to be crafting this. I forget what it's called, the ignition unit. And is that everything we need? I think we need to craft it over here, but I think that should be everything. There we go. So we got the gasoline engine. Uh, we are going to need to go down and fill up a bottle or a bucket with lubricant. And while we're down here, I do want to start cooking down some of this sludge. So it was suggested to me that because this frictional heater is semi-loud uh, compared to everything else, I might want to attach some redstone to it. And there's no real point in having it on all the time. Uh, you would also want to do this if you are putting a higher speed in here because it can cause issues if it does get to too high of a temperature. But do not worry, the uh, steam engine is never going to get this to a hot enough temperature that it'll be an issue. We're not getting instant smelting, but when you do start getting to that temperature, you don't want it running 24-7. But uh, right now, behind this, there is a comparator, so when there's nothing in here, then it will turn off the clutch. And well, it will, yeah, it'll stop powering the clutch and that will stop sending anything over to the frictional heater. So it'll stop running. And we can just come down here and grab the ethanol crystals out of here. But we're gonna grab the lubricant for now and I'll come up here and grab some more of the ethanol later. I have been making a lot of sludge over here and 
Eventually, I need to get a better reed farm than that out there. That's kind of a poor reed farm for the time being. It's okay. But eventually, we're going to need more with how many gasoline and performance engines we're using. But I'm going to throw that in there, and then we can get away from that loud noise. So, what we can do now is just go right downstairs. And I did mine down here because I don't feel like walking all the way back over there to actually go mining. So, we can just fall down here. We should be good. And it's a long long climb back up but uh yeah so dug out this little area down here it's nothing special there's a huge lake of lava over here if we were to we were to dig through this yeah enormous lake of lava uh it goes further over in that direction too so i'm just going to cover that up and we're not going to mine in that direction for a little bit okay so to set this up we are going to need to do a little little bit of work it's actually not that much uh if you actually know what you're doing but if you didn't know exactly how much torque you were sending to it or power, you probably want to hook up a dynameter to it uh, just because this is really easily able to show you the torque, power, and speed that it's going at. And it's a lot nicer when you're working with this. If you were having issues with the machine and you were stuck with something, it will start making loud noises when it gets stuck. And then you can pretty easily just come down and figure out what's wrong with it. But um, that'll tell you all you need to know. And it does work as a shaft pretty much. It just will transport the power through it. You do have an input and an output on opposite sides. So it's pretty much just a, you know, a shaft with a screen. So we're going to set up the boring machine. I believe we can just set it up. We'll start right here and get my screwdriver out so that we can flip this thing like this. There we go. And then we can throw down the gearbox behind it. And I do want to make sure we get the lubricant in here before we start the gasoline engine, which can go down right here. We can flip this puppy and now we can, oh, you know what? I forgot the chest. That's one thing. So now we can talk before we start powering this thing about everything that's going on in here. So I told you guys earlier that you could set the dimensions. There are maximum dimensions. I guess it's seven by five for this, but you do have maximum dimensions. I don't know why you'd ever need more than that unless you were trying to clear out an enormous room. But we're probably, uh, like I said, we're just going to be doing this for now. Um, just a two by one. You could make it more if you didn't really care about uh, running into, you know, three blocks of obsidian. Like if you wanted to do this and weren't worried about hitting three blocks of obsidian, which you wouldn't. Um, you could easily do that with this setup as far as I'm aware. But if you were ever to run into blocks like that, uh, right now, the max that this one can do with this setup is just going to be two blocks of obsidian. Preferably, I would do a setup like this eventually, which would involve me getting two gasoline engines, a shaft junction, combining them with a gearbox, and then we could run this. But uh, it really all depends on what the setup is for this. You can reset the position. You can turn drops on and drops off. And pretty much drops on is just going to bring it back to a chest here. And then you can see the power, speed, torque, all that good stuff. And if you did want to enchant this, you can pretty much just get the book and right click on the boring machine and it'll attach it to the boring machine. So it does skip the step of needing to use an anvil, uh, but we're going to go back upstairs and it occurs to me right now that I don't actually have a book with me. I used all of them when I was making the enchanting setup that is going to be upstairs, but we can go and I'm pretty sure we can just go out to the sugarcane farm, get some, make a book real quick and throw an enchant on it and hope we get one that's actually usable for this. I'd prefer efficiency. Uh, silk touch would also be nice. I already used one silk touch that I got. Probably a mistake, uh, but fortune would also be fine. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking about silk touch and all that. I do have a silk touch pick. When I was over in the old base, I did manage to find a dungeon. I've actually, I ran into another one over here, but I haven't cleared it yet. But uh, I did run into a dungeon, and the first book I got was Silk Touch. So I was hanging on to it until we actually needed it. And when it came to getting the uh, aluminum powder, I believe it was, you need to Silk Touch Redstone or Lapis for that. And so it finally came in handy. So this is the really, really poor reed farm over here. And eventually, you know, I will automate it. Don't worry. But we are going to need three, and I've been using... Oh my gosh, it's running away. These always run away. This is why this is such a poor area. I'm not even using this anymore. I probably should have put a clutch over here to turn this off, but I didn't. It was a mistake. Yes, I know. But you can see the enchanting setup is up there, and we're just going to run up there, enchant a book, and hope that we get something that's useful for this. This is still on the old enchanting setup, so yeah, we're a little unfortunate in that regard, but... Let's get the book ready to go. We'll also get to grab the rest of the ethanol crystals. Okay, so I feel like there should be a better way to do this. Like, I, I'm really a noob when it comes to enchanting. Wait, 
Oh my god, I had a book made. I that's horrible. Okay, you guys are probably cringing there, but whatever. We had a book made. That's a little unfortunate, but I'm a noob when it comes to enchanting just because I feel like there should be a better way. Like I can put an enchant on a pick and then I don't know if you can move it to a book. I know you can move books to picks and stuff, but I wish there was a better way to guarantee that I would get a pick enchant, but that's I that pretty that's no. That's that's rough. Well, there goes 30 levels down the drain. We'll just uh we're, we're gonna cry about that off camera, but don't worry. Don't worry. We'll get them. Okay uh, It's unfortunate because I was hoping I could show you guys how it works, but we will eventually cover that We can grab the chest right now. We can grab the rest of the ethanol crystals that should be down here and Yeah, we got a good amount of them and you can see that this shuts off then uh, I do think I might need to put some more in up here for the rest of these diamonds that I've been processing I will do that really quick We'll just throw 20 in up there. I don't even have redstone in with it, so I should probably throw that in too. I'm running a little low on redstone, but get that in there. It's a little low, but that's fine. Okay, so now we can go back downstairs, fall back down. I think we should have everything for this. I hope. I don't feel like making... That's, that's a long trip back up. But we can throw down the chest right here, and we can throw the ethanol crystals in here, and it should... Should be able to start. Hmm. Oh, is this this is flipped the wrong way? Okay. Jeez. Getting bored. That actually scared me. I'd like you guys to know that. So it does make this little thing right here. This is the mining pipe, and it'll start extending out. Now this does have an operating time that you can see. I've seen people seeing it on that whale thing at the top. I actually don't know if I have whale in this pack right now. Like I know you can see stone right now, but uh. I've seen other videos where you can actually see the specific time with a high efficiency you can get it down to like eight seconds per but you can see that it did dig the two by one right here and it does take a while though like I said to continue running so it's gonna require a lot of ethanol so this right now we have 18 minutes in I am going to throw uh, we can throw a little bit more in there I don't think it's gonna take that long to go in that direction so you can see it's digging these out it makes a very ominous sound when it does that and it's pretty much just having these mining pipes right here as like solid blocks and then it's extending out stuff that looks more similar to pipe uh, or the pipe that you'd be thinking of down that direction and you can see it's putting cobblestone and dirt in here I believe the initial cobblestone is what it got rid of when it was extending this outwards uh, and just puts that in there now there are a couple cool things about this as far as I'm aware It does not have any issues when it runs into lava or water It also will prevent the ceiling from collapsing if you were to dig under gravel or stone or um, sand or something like that It would replace uh, the gravel with stone and it would replace the sand with sandstone So it's very nice in that regard a uh, lot of nice things about it and pretty much you can just you know break all this stuff and move it it's really nice because we don't it's pretty much just four blocks that we have to get rid of so whenever we're finished with this tunnel we can just break this and move it and we should be good and again like the diamond gearbox you don't have to maintain this at all just because it's uh, never gonna need more lubricant so this is very nice to have a bedrock one would be nice too but if you did need to maintain the lubricant you could just hook it up to a hose very easily and um, you could hook up a hose to the gasoline or a liquid pipe up to the gasoline engine if you really wanted to pump ethanol in there too so uh, that's gonna be it for today guys I know it was a little bit of a shorter video but this is gonna be very nice I don't know if you guys realize how nice this is gonna be for me but getting all the steel and prepping for episodes does take quite some time and uh, I've been feeling a little bit under the weather recently, so hasn't been the most enjoyable thing going mining for like an hour to two hours and, you know, letting the extractor run and all that. So this will help out a lot. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to give it a like. Also, if you found it entertaining, informative, any of that stuff, feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot. And I will talk to you guys later.